how much is, is the Draymond boxing out? His box outs, this uh, series have been amazing. You know, Capella is there every play, and uh, Draymond finds a way to box him out and still get his hand on the, the rebound and either get it uh, himself or uh, direct it to a teammate. So, yeah, I mean, finishing a possession is, is such a big part of defense. It's not just um, field goal percentage defense. That's a good indicator, but, um, you know, keeping them off the offensive glass is a big deal, too. Does it take it? What's that? How ancient the NBA skill is that? Is that? Quite yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's something that seems to um, elude lots of players in the league. You know, a lot of guys... Uh, Shot goes up and they just turn and look. And, um, you know, you can't turn and look. You've got to see if your guy's coming. Um, I think the game's changed. I don't think you kind of box out like you did 30 years ago where you, you know, you step into them and you turn and you seal. I think it's more uh, you kind of hit him, hit a guy in the chest, just knock his balance off and then go get the ball. But in this series, I'm seeing a lot of traditional box outs from Draymond because Capella is down on the baseline, and as the shot goes up, Draymond's uh, taking him out. He's doing a great job of that. Does it take a 41-point win for us to not ask you about Draymond getting a team? Uh, I, I'm here. I'm here for you, Ann. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I won a, a Rudy Tomjanovich award yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, if you don't mind, I'd rather talk about that. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm thrilled. Let's go back to the series now. <laughs> but the, the T coming late in the game, I mean, that... Yeah, I thought it was unfair, but, um, you know, we'll take it up with the league. Um, you know, he committed a hard foul, but he held Ariza up and, um, you know, didn't allow him to get hurt, and then Ariza shoved him. Uh, it didn't seem like a double technical to me. So we'll take it up with the league, and we'll see what happens. Before Steph broke up, both Katie and Draymond were very steadfast in supporting him, saying that... They believe that it was just a matter of time before that happened. What type of effect does that have on a shooter? Just like guys having that much confidence in them? I think it helps to have the confidence of your teammates, but the, the main thing is to have the confidence in yourself, and that's what makes Steph so special. Um, it doesn't matter. Even on the biggest stage, you know, he can have a, a difficult stretch, and he genuinely believes the next one's going in. You could see that last night, and... Um, you know, he missed, I think he was one for six in the first half from three, but you knew it was just a matter of, of time, and he finally got it going. And, but I, I, we've seen that from him throughout his career. It's a, it's a special kind of confidence that very few players have. Do you think the guys in the locker room have like a special belief in each other compared to other teams that you've been around? Uh, great teams generally have uh, a lot of belief. Championship teams have a lot of belief. That's how you're able to win one in the first place. Steph's taking like twice as many from five feet and in than he normally yeah. does per game. I know it's only three games, but why do you think he's been able to be so deadly inside in this series? Well, they're a pretty unique team with all their switching. Um, you know, if they uh, want to take away some of his threes, they're going to be able to, but that leaves the paint exposed. They're switching everything, so Capella frequently ends up on the perimeter. And then they don't have shot blocking if Capella's uh, not at the rim. Uh, so Steph's just making good reads, getting into the paint, finishing. Um, and then, obviously, he uh, got the three going last night as well. Steph's favorite Steph celebration that you've seen. Um, and what, what was your best one as a player? Oh, yeah, yeah, I had a lot of them. My, my favorite, I've told this story before, my favorite Steph celebration was the shimmy in Portland um, when he finally made a three that um, got him to one for 11. <laughs> so you want to talk about confidence? You, may, you, you shimmy when you're one for 11, that's confidence. Yeah. Mike he, said, he, said he's his big, he said sometimes you just have to be out there and be your biggest, your own biggest yeah, man and true. have amnesia. It's true. It's true. I wasn't capable of that. You know, I'd go into a shell if I'd miss four or five threes in a row. And, um, most guys would, to be honest with you, but Steph's, he's a different breed. Mike D'Antoni said this morning he thinks the pressure will be on you guys tomorrow night and that it's a must-win game for you guys. Is that an accurate statement, or do you see it that way? <laughs> I hope so. We're much better when the pressure's on. And um, He's right. I mean, we're at home, um, so if they win, they have home court advantage. So, yeah, pressure's on us, and uh, 
kind of on them too. Though. <laughs> Steph said that he would uh, he was hearing the show game two film and just say don't do that yeah. to, to prevent a letdown yeah. for, for tomorrow night. But are you concerned that after a forty-one point win that? Not really. Um, you know, Draymond said it the other day. We're we, we're allowed one of these games, a series. We already had that game, game two, where we let down. Um, this team that we're playing against won 65 games. They had one of the best regular seasons in the history of the game. They got the guy who's probably going to be the MVP. They got Chris Paul, who's a Hall of Famer. He got great role players. Um, they're really well coached. They have a great strategy. Um, excellent defense. We know all these things. Um, and, you know, it doesn't matter if we won by one or 41. You know, Danny Ainge years ago, after our blowout, win for the Celtics and this is how my mind works because he didn't he hasn't played for about 30 years but <laughs> for some reason I remember stuff like this I don't remember what I had for breakfast but I remember what Danny Ainge said 30 years ago they won a they won a playoff game by 40 and he said this is not the Tour de France you know you don't start with a big lead because you you know it's not based on time or how much you won by it's the NBA so it's two to one and uh, it doesn't matter what happened yesterday um we got to be ready for a great team that's going to come out like they did in Game 2, attacking, hair on fire, um, and uh, taking the force to us, and we got to be ready for that. Too. What do you think along those lines in terms of blowouts? I think in all six games in both conference finals, I don't think there's been a game within 10 points yet that you think you can attribute that to the deliberation of three-point shooting. I think the threes have a lot to do with it. Um, you know, these days, uh, game can get away from you quickly if you're giving up a lot of threes. And, um, you know, defense is always the difference. Um, but what happens nowadays, the defense often leads to a three-point barrage uh, for most teams out there, Cleveland, Boston, us, Houston. Um, so I, th- I would say if I had to guess, you know, that's why there have been more blowouts, but that's just a guess. Steve, that's the step defensively, the kick over had him. But especially yesterday, they didn't really score on him all that much in his pick and roll. Do you think that helps fuel him even when the shot's not going like it wasn't in the first half, keeps him in the game? He's pretty competitive, you guys know that. And when they pick on him every time, um, it fires him up, you know. So um, it's tiring. They're they're smart to do it, you know, they're trying to wear him down and they got great one-on-one players, um, so this is kind of the way we've been attacked in the past too. Cleveland has done it. If you have the personnel to do it, it's a good strategy. But he's better than people think uh, defensively. He's got quick hands, and he's capable of holding up. And even if they don't, um, even if they do score, uh, he's got the mental fortitude to just take it and keep playing. Quinn Cook did. Quinn Cook did in eleven minutes last night. Quinn Cook? Yeah. Uh, Quinn. Quinn's always ready. He's, he's a pro. Um, so doesn't matter in the meat of the game or at the end of a blowout. He's going to come out and do his job. And he knocked down a couple shots. And I have the ultimate faith in him. And he could still play a role in this series and and uh, beyond if we get further. We talked about training camp about playing with an edge defensively. How do you see that kind of evolve throughout the season? Well, we didn't have it for about um, half the season. Um, and we've talked about this. It's understandable um, given the run we've been on the last few years, the wear and tear. But the defensive edge has basically been here during the playoffs, you know, minus a couple of games. But that will determine how far we go, our defensive intensity and our edge. You had talked about getting Step open, doing some things to get him open. And- First half, there's that sequence where he passed to Draymond um, off the switch and then cut out for the three and missed it. And then it seemed like in the second half, he was mostly just going off yeah. contested shots. Do you need to, to do things to get him? Do, do you think those things help, or does he really need it? Well, I think um, anytime we can help a guy get an open shot, that's our job as a, as a staff. I think the thing with Steph, he's more likely to break free just by making one. So if he can get an easy one early, I think that's a big help. Do you have a standard breakfast? I do not. No. What's it? Changes every day. Changes every day. Okay. Yeah. That's why you can't. That's why I can't remember. Okay. No. <laughs> Steve, you can Thank argue you. that the, the end of the first quarter, the last three and a half minutes, was maybe where the game swung and it was all based on you 
defense can be like ten straight stops. What was it in that flurry defensively that you guys did particularly well? Thought Looney came in, did a really good job for us. Got that big block that led to a bucket at the other end. Um, I just think we were solid. We didn't foul. Uh, we made them take tough shots and um, stayed with it. And, but that's got to be the game plan, you know, for 48 minutes. Make it difficult. Don't foul. Keep playing if they do score, and trust that over the course of the game things will work out. Yeah, because. Um, you know, he's undersized, but still capable of standing up strength-wise uh, to bigger guys and boxing them out. It's pretty unique that he can do it. Yeah. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but there's a lot on the line, so he's, he's bringing it. Scotty here yesterday talking about, uh, talk about your guys. What would it take to get Rodman here to talk about Draymond? What would it what? What would it take to get Rodman here to talk about Draymond? That's, that's uh, not my department. <laughs> All right. All right sir. See ya.